Laser sights will make you a more accurate and confident shooter by providing visual feedback on sight alignment and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sight standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. National voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. Well, 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 glad that you could be here. Third hour of Gun Talk, having some fun. This hour, we're going to be talking about uh, holsters and such. Also, going to talk about a, an interesting controversy that you've never heard of in the shooting world, right out of history. New book that details a couple of uh, exhibition shooters and claims and counterclaims. Fascinating stuff. This is going to be really a lot of fun. Uh, and, but before we get to our guests, I do have a call that we need to get to because it follows up on a story about Three or four weeks ago, we had the massive flooding in Baton Rouge, Louisiana area. We had a caller who said, hey, what do you do with this ammo that got wet? It was all underwater. And I said, well, actually, I don't know. So I contacted the National Shooting Sports Foundation. They are connected with SAMI, the people who basically oversee safety of ammunition. And took them several weeks, but they put out a paper and they said, the bottom line is if your ammo gets submerged, don't shoot it. Basically, just don't shoot it. Well, Mike's called in from Farmington, New Mexico on four, and Mike has a thought on that. Hey, Mike, what do you think? What should we do with this, or what have you done? Good afternoon, Tom. Uh, Mike Artard, this has happened to me in the past, uh, but uh, I just pulled out the old bullet puller, pulled the bullets, saved the cases, got rid of the primers, uh, got rid of the powder with some uh, tannerite, and uh, just reloaded them. Uh, hmm. You're not. You're out a little bit. Sure. But you're not. You're not out the whole whole deal. Well, it's a good point. I mean, if you had a whole bunch of now, this would be metallic ammo, not shot shell. Uh, but if you had pistol or rifle ammo, you can get a bullet puller. You can pull the bullets out, dump out the powder, and to get rid of the primer because the primer could be suspect too. You can just put the case into a firearm and shoot it with just the primer in it. Uh, point in a safe direction and wear eye and ear protection, uh, but you pop that and then you uh, can knock out the primer and then just basically reload the cases so you're saving the case and you're saving the bullet. So you're saving probably at least half the cost of the ammo. Just reload it. Yes, and and, and shooting all the primers off was a laborious task. Uh, it was uh, incredibly boring. But, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, it, absolutely. It, 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 you 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 can save you can you can you can save a lot of money just by pulling your bullets and saving your brass. Absolutely, and there's uh, if you decided okay, I'm not going to reload. If you knew that the the person you're selling it to, you could sell that ammo to somebody who is going to pull a bullet. But what you would, would not want to do is sell the ammo to somebody who is then going to try to shoot it. Because the problem here is a safety issue. You don't know what's happened to that powder in there. You don't know if it's been affected in its burn rate when it got wet and then dried out again. You don't know if it actually is dried out. And anybody who thinks that they could heat up ammo to dry it out, I don't know that I actually need to say anything about that. But there you go. Hey, Mike, thank you. That's a great idea as a way to salvage a lot of the money. Because, I mean, this guy who called the show, he said he had like, 10,000 rounds, and yeah, it would be tedious and laborious to pop all those primers, but you could save about half the money that you got into the ammo. So there you go. We talk a lot. In fact, we had a call just not just a few minutes ago about somebody who was talking about a gun belt, trying to get a gun belt that's comfortable, trying to get a comfortable rig. We talk about that all the time. And one of the companies that we talk with about Holsters and belts and getting good gear, the folks at Alien Gear Holsters. And we've got uh, uh, Mo Regalado is joining us right now to talk about kind of some of the stories that they get there. Hey, Mo, I appreciate you being on. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate uh, spending this Sunday with you. 
Absolutely. So I know you guys, you sell a lot of different holsters and belts, and you've got, I don't know, close to a million people following you on Facebook and on social media. As they used to say, you hear stories about people caring. So we thought, tell us some of these stories. you got to have one or two that are kind of interesting from some of your customers. Well, you know, first off, I have to say, absolutely love our fans. I run the Alien Gear Holsters Facebook page as well as Twitter and Instagram. And our fans are some of the absolute best that we have out there because they're so willing to connect with us. They're so willing to share their stories with us. And um, just recently, I'm so glad that I'm actually on our um, Alien Gear Holsters Facebook page. And this was a story that had skipped my attention. But a gentleman mm-hmm. writes that he was in a um, he was in a motorcycle wreck. His name is uh, Shane Quackenbush, and he's out of Indianapolis, um, Indiana. And he said the impact knocked the holster and gun completely out of his pants, but the gun stayed firmly in the holster. It even slid Ooh. across the pavement, and it never came out. Now, he contacted our customer service. We sent him out a new shell um, because, of course, his was all scratched up. And then right. we sent him new clips free of charge. So he's, of course, now obviously we never want that to happen to anyone, but mm-hmm. to have, you know, have this testimonial on our site, we didn't ask for it. He came and, and brought it to us. But can you imagine just like you're, you're concealed carrying, you're on a motorcycle, boom, you get hit. And then to find out that your gun stayed exactly, well, obviously it didn't stay inside of his pants because it got knocked out. <laughs> but it stayed firmly right. in the holster. But can you imagine the impact? I mean, if you got no. hit that hard that it went flying, but just to come and tell us that, that it stayed where it was supposed to be and, and mm-hmm. just... I mean, just stuff like that is just absolutely amazing. There's, since you're running the social media side of things, there is a, not just an willingness, but I would say it's an eagerness of for people to share their experiences when they are, they enter the concealed carry world of, you know, they have questions. What do I do? How do I do this? The first time you carry your you feel like you've got this sign over your head that says, hey, this person's carried a gun, and then that goes away with experience. But there is an eagerness of people who've been at it a long time to turn around and help people who are new in this. And, and this community you've built online is a fabulous place to share that and get involved. Yes, it definitely is. You know, and, and one of the funny things is, is um, you know, I come from a, a family of people in the military and in law enforcement and so it was really funny that there was a, a meme that was floating about that uh, um, that I actually caught on my brother's page, and um, it's a keep your booger hook off the bang switch till you're ready to bring the heat. <laughs> and it was so funny to have, um, and that's something my brother said to me for years, for years, mind you. And then, yeah. uh, you know, to go through... Um, our comments on that meme that we had on there where so many people mentioned the fact that, Hey, I've heard this plenty of times, or I remember Mm -hmm. when, you know, my dad said this to me, or when I was in the Academy, it was something similar, a little more salty, but it was something similar. So it's so nice to see things like that, where, (laughs) where people are connecting, not just with us, but with everybody else. And they are so Mm -hmm. willing to help out like, Hey, you know, if you have an issue with this, or um, we had a meme about, ARs. It was something like, um, well, I can't even remember now, but it had to do with, with ARs. and was super funny because people were talking about where they're buying their next upper, where they're getting their next lower. I mean, mm-hmm. it was hilarious. And one guy was on there saying, hey, I'm building my brand, you know, I'm building a new one all by myself and I need some help. Can you help me out? And it was, it was a comment that probably had about 28 more comments underneath there. And so, like, our fans are just, when I say they're the best, they really are the best. You know, what's interesting about that to me is Alien Gear doesn't make anything for AR. So you have no, a, uh, a community of, <laughs> I know, but, but you've got a community of gun folks there is what happened now. We do. We have a great community of people who, who love their rights and they love their guns and they love, you know, they love sharing their knowledge. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, kind of, kind of going into a more sobering effect, um, when Orlando happened and, uh, you know, we were just all just devastated. It was amazing to us how many people, um, were saying, Hey, you know, if you need help, if, if you want to learn, um, if this is something that you're interested in, please contact us. 
And that was happening just on our page. So you can just imagine probably what was happening all around the United States at that time. So um, they're just, they are really willing to help. And um, they're just your average Joes, you know? And that's what's cool about it. It's it's really an interesting thing when there's a feeling when you decide you want to carry. You say, okay, I'm going to take responsibility for myself. Man or woman, doesn't matter. I, w- I want to get a gun. I'm going to carry. I'm going to go get some training. But it is very, very much a feeling of I'm alone in this. And I'm kind of lost and bewildered. And when you find a place that says, hey, that's okay. Ask any question you want. Somewhere in here, we will have the answer for you. It's kind of this warm and comforting feeling. You go, oh, I'm not really alone. And, and, and I can learn to do this. Right. And not only can you learn to do it, but you can learn to do it properly. And, and, um, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I do have to say that um, one of the comments on one of our threads was, you know, I, I, when I took my, my selfie with my new gun, I had my finger on the trigger. <laughs> this is not me personally. Uh, this was one of right. our comments. And he, and he posted up the picture to show us. And he said that the, uh, the guy who sold him the gun literally like yelled at him for five minutes, but <laughs> did it, <laughs> did it in a way where it, he was just like, you know, like I needed to know that he goes, I hadn't had my training yet. I hadn't gotten my, you know, I hadn't mm-hmm. gotten certain things in place. And he yeah. goes, you know, I was a first time gun owner. And, and then somebody better. commented underneath there. These are the kind of, um, you know, these are the kind of training bruises that you need to have that you need. These are the things that if we want to be respected in our community, these are what we need to do. So even, even sharing his story of, Hey, I, I messed up. Um, you right. know, somebody was saying, Hey, I've been there, done that. And it, it goes with the territory. So that was kind of cool. That, that absolutely is cool. Now, obviously, you guys make really good holsters, and you make really good belts, and you make, I would call it the support system. You don't make the guns, but you make the support system for carrying the guns. And every week, so I get somebody that calls in and says, you know, Tom, you've been talking about getting a good holster, and especially about getting a good belt for years. And I never did that. And then when I finally did, it's kind of like, Wow. Tom was right. This is more comfortable. And you just want to go, really? I keep saying this, and, and it took you this long? Don't you guys feel like that sometimes? It's kind of like, we keep telling you this. Right. And, it, and it's not just, you know, we we wear our product. And we not only do we wear our product, we represent our product. And so we have to know that this is what works. One of the um, kind of going off the belt thing real quick Um Mag carriers are coming out, people. Mag carriers are coming out. We've been saying it on social media. We just have to get something that um, that passes our boss's inspection. It's not just ours; it's his. And so, um, so when we tell you, you know, you need a you need a good gun belt. You need mm-hmm. you know a good belt to carry your holster to hold it up to make you feel secure. We mean it because we're doing it. And um, and on that, through September 16th, uh, our sister company, Bigfoot Gun Belts, which is the website mm-hmm. gunbelts.com, uh, they have $10 off uh, any steel core. Let's see. Let me see if it's any steel core. I think it's actually the 14-ounce steel core leather gun belt. So $10 off through the 16th, gunbelts.com. You're totally going to want to go there, and you're going to want to get your very – these are nice belts. I wish – you know, obviously, we're on radio right now. Um, we don't have smell vision. We don't have any vision whatsoever. <laughs> These are nice belts. When I first started working for the company and I saw our gun belts, I was like, that's a really nice belt. Like, English mm. bridal leather, the stitching is fantastic. It's mm-hmm. it's a sturdy belt, and it's very comfortable to wear. And then, oh, I'm, uh, wait, wait. Through, I'm, uh, I'm looking at, I'm looking at yeah, your website what? here, and this is this is so cool on your website. You can see kind of the uh, the crummy belt and the good and your good belt with a gun in it, and see where the belt sags and when it doesn't. When you're getting a good, cu- that's a great display. At Bigfoot belts, uh, it's uh, gunbelts.com. I'm sorry, I interrupted yes. you. You had another promotion. No, no, it's okay. No, but you're absolutely right. We actually went to a, um, just on the, the whole gun belts thing. We went to um, a kind of like a law enforcement seminar, and one of the guys came up to us and he said. I love your belts. And we're like, okay, cool. Thanks. And he goes, no, really? He said, 
I can't believe it took this long to somebody for somebody to figure this out. Because when I wear my <laughs> off duty, um, mm-hmm. when I wear my off duty holster, which of course was alien gear, um, he was like, you know, my regular belt just it would crimp, it would sag, it wouldn't hold properly. He goes, but this mm-hmm. one, he goes, it's fantastic. Love it, absolutely love it. Keep up, you know, keep up the good work. So it was so cool to have somebody come up to us and just tell us how much they absolutely loved it. And talking about the things that you were just talking about, no sag, super secure. We're not, you know, obviously, like I said, we're not asking for it. They're just coming up and telling us. And then um, just just to mention the other promotion that we do have running, um, this is on the Old Faithful, um, our Old Faithful Holsters, which is oldfaithfulholsters.com. It's kind of, you know, our where we all start and where we started from. And we have $20 all right. off our old faithful leather and steel IWB concealed carry holster. So that's a huge saving. So if you want, yeah. uh, if you want an old faithful holster, just uh, go over there. It's oldfaithfulholsters.com. They're now only 45 bucks. And save 10 bucks uh, on a belt at uh, gunbelts.com. That's correct, sir. Mo, thank you so much. Well, thank you, sir, for having me on. You have a good one. You too. All righty. 866-TALK-GUN. Be right back with more gun talk. Laser sights increase confidence, regardless of experience level. Whether you're learning the fundamentals, a seasoned shooter, or simply overcoming aging eyes, laser sights provide instant feedback, providing immediate confidence and enjoyment for a new shooter. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn more about why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com That's ShopGunTalk.com After a long work day, you need a break when you get home. That's when it's trigger time. With quality adult air guns that are powerful, accurate, and quiet... And cost just pennies to shoot. We are Pyramid Air. We know air guns. Let our experts with more than 150 years of combined air gun experience help find the right air gun for you. Get your trigger time, anytime, for less. PyramidAir.com If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Delio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Delio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Delio. Made in America. Gluten-free. At the App Store and Google Play or GunDelio.com. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out. Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. Line two, Jesse's with us out of Arkansas. Hey, Jesse, you're on Gun Talk. Well, thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. I have mm-hmm. a question for you about Creedmoor 6.5. Hey. I've had a Ruger precision rifle on order for over a year and haven't gotten it. 
And I noticed mm-hmm. Savage has come out with a new Creedmoor. And the gun that they came out with comes in 308 and the Creedmoor 6.5. My question is, there's a 4-inch length difference between the 308 and the 6.5. Can you tell me the reason for that? Um, could be marketing. Could be somebody just decided to do that. It could be that the 308 uh, generally burns up its powder by the time the bullet has traveled 20 inches, and you're not going to get much, if any, ex- extra velocity. Not a lot. you get some. Uh, could be any of those. Honestly, sometimes it's nothing more than marketing. I don't know of a solid reason for it. I don't know if the Creedmoor cartridge generally can take advantage of a longer barrel. One thing I can tell you is it makes absolutely no difference in accuracy. Short, okay. long barrel, doesn't matter. Hey, I appreciate it, and I enjoy your show. Thank you. Good luck with getting the uh, the rifle that you're looking for. Hey, Mick is on line one out of, is it Apotka, Florida? Hey, Mick, Apop- how do you say that? Apotka, sir. All anyway, right, Apotka, hello, thank Tom. you. Uh, I got a question for you. I'm going to buy a handgun, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking of a three fifty seven thirty eight. Um, and I've been looking at the Smith & Wesson, but it is so expensive. Do you really get that much better quality as opposed to, say, a Taurus or, say, a, a, a Ruger? Here's uh, where I end up. Here's where I end up on that. Figure out which one you – all right, first of all, the question I always ask is, how long do you think it's going to last you? The answer, of course, is pretty much forever. Uh, and then which one do you really want? And then buy it. Uh, I don't get into the whole, gee, which one is better? Uh, Generally, if you say, I really want the most expensive, the best one, that's the one you want, you should buy it. If you say, but I really like Ruger's, that's the one you should buy. Or if you say, but I really just want to get the spend the least amount of money possible, then go that way. There's no right answer for any one individual, but I will just add, consider how long you expect a gun to last and then amortize that cost over that period of time. And what you'll find is it's less than a dollar a month difference. It just makes almost no difference. When we come back, we'll talk about a controversy in exhibition shooting, one you've never heard of, but it's interesting. Gun Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Washington Times Opinion Page regular contributor Tom Gresham. There was a time in America... When shooting exhibitions and shooting competitions would draw huge crowds. I'm talking about crowds like go to major football games now. You would have 30 or 50,000 people who would show up to watch one-on-one shooting competitions. There were, of course, exhibition shooters back in those days. And they made a living by going around and doing, well, shooting in front of the public. It was, a, it was a different time. It was an interesting time. And the history of that is fascinating. And just when you think you have pretty much read and heard and seen everything about all that, somebody comes out with something and says, hey, there's a little bit more to this than you knew. And that's what has happened with a brand new book. Joining me right now to talk about that is the author, Tim Price, the author of Shooting for the Record, Adolph Topperwine, Tom Fry, and Sharpshooting's Forgotten Controversy. Tim, welcome to Gun Talk. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having me. You bet. Now, uh, those who don't know, uh, Ed Topperwine, Ed and his wife, Plinky, famous mm, through, really, God, they must have done that for 50 years. Uh, I mean, they, they were at it Very for close. a long, long time. Yeah. They started shooting together as a couple in the early 1900s. Their first big performance, they were working for Winchester Repeating Arms Company. Mm -hmm. Actually, they met in the plant at New Haven. Uh, Elizabeth Mm -hmm. Servetti was her name. She was a German immigrant who was about 19 years old working in the um, 
pistol uh, cartridge loading room, and she that's about all she wanted to do with guns. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ad Tupperwine was already working for Winchester, had really just been hired. Um, and she saw him and uh, was quite attracted to him and found out that he was a guns performer. And she, when they got married, she wanted to shoot guns too. So from 19, close to 1904 to World War, the end of World War II, they were uh, uh, kind of like Frank Butler and, and Annie Oakley. They were a, a, a very famous performing shooting team. Uh, their first performance, big performance, was 1904 in St. Louis at the World's Fair, and they just kept on going until the, uh, until actually Plinky uh, Elizabeth, they called her Plinky, mm-hmm. she would plink targets out of the air. But uh, they went until she passed away uh, pretty close to the end of World War II. Hmm. Okay. And then one of the things that he is famous for, and it's kind of one of the, the, the crux of the book, is setting a record for shooting targets, throwing up wooden blocks in the air, and shooting them with a twenty two rifle. Is that right? Correct. That's the focus of the book. It's what I start off with, and then I kind of introduce it, and, and then kind of back off, and then just kind of, you know, how did we get to that point? And I just kind of build up both the careers of Adolf Tupperwine and Tom Fry. Uh, Ad, in 1907, he, he had been... As a part of the build-up to this moment, he had been attracted to the idea of endurance shooting uh, by primarily Doc Carver, who was a partner, uh, an unhappy partner with uh, Buffalo Bill in the first Wild West mm. shows. Mm. Well, uh, Doc Carver would have these great betting events where he would prove that he could hit, uh, he could shoot at sixty thousand wooden blocks or other objects thrown into the air. He'd stand about twenty, twenty-five feet away and fire away at him. He'd shoot sixty. Uh, over about seven days, and this fascinated a, a young boy by the name of Adolf Tupperwine, who was growing up in Texas as the son of a gunsmith. Uh, so, Ad just kept on building towards this during his career, and in 1907, the time was right in San Antonio. He planned to shoot at 60,000 wooden blocks. They were about two and a quarter inches cubed with his uh, 1903 Winchester, mm-hmm. and um, he got to 60,000. He had more ammunition. He asked the judges if he could keep firing at, at some of the blocks that weren't torn up. They ran through those. Uh, some carpenters around the place sawed off some what they call basswood slabs from the nearest cedar tree they could find, and they fashioned those into blocks. <laughs> he kept on going to 72,500. He ran out of ammunition. The Winchester 1903 had a specially designed bullet. It was the first auto loader that Winchester mm-hmm. had marketed. So it, it needed a, a specific uh, bullet to carry out the task, and they ran out of those. So, Top being uh, uh, Top was his nickname, being totally spent and having bad nightmares of blocks flo- uh, floating through the air. Uh, he had had enough. So, seventy-two thousand five hundred. <laughs> he shot after about twenty to twenty-five feet, and he he, he hit all but nine with his twenty-two that's, rifle. It was, it's a remarkable astounding. performance. All right, so fast forward us. This is sitting on the record books for literally decades, and then. Remington has a uh, their own exhibition shooter, Tom Fry, but this is probably a a generation or two later. Yeah, it was. Although Tom Fry grew up in the uh, uh, target shooting hotbed, really of of Ohio, uh, mm-hmm. right down the road from the Grand American, uh, right down the road from Camp Perry. Uh, his father was a shooter, uh, an amateur shooter uh, who was won some local competitions and. Uh, Tom Fry was inspired to shoot, and uh, as a young boy, his dad made sure that he got down to Vandalia, Ohio, for the Grand American, and he would be able to meet Adolf Tupperwine. So as a little boy, Tom Fry shook the hand of Adolf Tupperwine. He knew all about Uh, Adolf Tupperwine, and he was quite mm -hmm. inspired and had hoped one day maybe to take a crack at it, but he kind of lost interest in it. He'd been in a horrible car accident that fractured some of his vertebrae and was quite lucky to start shooting again. And he was shooting in, uh, uh, in front of some, you know, as you mentioned, some big crowds. By this time, it wasn't quite, uh, it was more the country fairs that he was shooting at, but still right. drawing, you know, thousands of people. Well, one of his uh, biggest fans was a, was a colonel by the name of Newt Crumley. And uh, Colonel Crumley also owned casinos in Nevada, one at Reno, and was just so impressed by Tom Fry. He says, you never miss. You just need to keep going. 
and knew Crumley knew all about the the record, and and so mm-hmm. when Tom Fry said, you know, I'd be crazy, no one be you know, stupid enough to even try this. They, there's no way they'd break it. Right. Well, he he decided he'd go ahead and give it a shot uh, because Newt Crumley went up to him and said, "We've got a hundred thousand wooden blocks that I that I will pay for. It. I'll do everything <laughs> for you to get you to break this record." So he did it. Hey, Tim. Uh, All right, Tim, hold, hold, on, hold on to that just for a second here, Tim. I'm going to take a quick break, and we can, we're can we going to pick this up and find out what happened when Tom Fry decided to break the record, start with 100,000 blocks. And, as they say, there's the rest of the story of what actually happened here because it turned out that there was, well, there was more to this than you might imagine. We're talking with Tim Price. He's the author of the book, Shooting for the Record, Adolph Topperwine, Tom Fry, and Sharpshooting's Forgotten Controversy. Be right back. The Smith & Wesson Bodyguards. Carry more comfortably. Walk more confidently. When it comes to personal protection, nothing beats a bodyguard. Choose the lightweight, compact, and concealable Bodyguard 380 pistol or the Bodyguard 38 revolver, both with a built-in laser sight. The Smith & Wesson Bodyguards. Carry more comfortably. Walk more confidently. The Black Hills. There's nothing like it on Earth. The kind of place where characters become legends. Wild Bill Hickok. Crazy Oars. Calamity Jane. Pick any part of the world and you'll find people go there to make it their own. But this is where people come to get made. This is the place that made the people who make the best ammo on earth. Black Hills Ammunition. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look, this really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShopGunTalk.com. ShopGunTalk.com. Want to customize the look of your firearm and give it ultimate durability? Well, don't paint it. Cerakote it. Cerakote is a spray-on ceramic polymer coating that uses state-of-the-art technology to achieve superior abrasion resistance and corrosion protection. Field-proven and trusted by manufacturers and gun owners like you, Cerakote is the industry's unmatched performance leader. In lab testing and real-world applications, Cerakote outperforms the competition every time. See for yourself and find a local certified applicator near you at Cerakote.com. Choose the best. Choose Cerakote and finish strong. When it's all on the line, you can count on Trijicon Optics. Earning its reputation in combat and on hunts in all corners of the world, Trijicon comes through. The new AccuPower rifle scopes feature battery-powered illuminated reticles, variable power, adjustable brightness, plus they're waterproof. The years of waiting, the dollar spent, your hunt of a lifetime comes down to a single moment. Get Trijicon quality. Trijicon.com. Trijicon.com. All right, back with you. We're talking with Tim Price, uh, the author of Shooting for the Record, Adolph Topperwine, Tom Fry, and Sharpshooting's Forgotten Controversy. And, Tim, we're just about to get started here where uh, Fry is about to try to break Ad Topperwine's record. He's got 100,000 wooden blocks ready to go, ammo supplied by a Remington. And if I remember right, he's shooting a Remington Model 66, Nylon 66. That's correct. Uh, that was a breakthrough firearm, the first firearm that was made primarily of synthetic materials, uh, very lightweight. Mm-hmm. I remember shooting one when I was a boy after shooting a, a, you know, your traditional twenty two, and it just really felt weird, the light feel of it, the whole bit, the plastic yeah, of the absolutely. cheek. It, just, it was just a lot, <laughs> a lot different, but that's what Tom used. Uh, it had come out of the Remington factory within months. 
and he put it to the test. It never misfired through 100,000 rounds. He used two. Uh, mm-hmm. And one of, the, one of those uh, guns that he used is at the uh, Cody Firearms Museum. The other one's back at Remington at their museum at, uh, um, at uh, Herkimer County. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But he lined up 100,000 wooden blocks. It took him – Remington, it's interesting, Remington would not participate in this. They did not not want to sponsor in any way, promote this event. They were afraid huh. that it would kick off a promotional duel with Winchester, and they just didn't want to get into that sort of thing. So they mm-hmm. did not want him – they did not support him in doing this. That's why New Crumley, the casino owner, came around and paid for everything. So Tom oh, wow. had to, he had to do this on his two-week vacation. And so he did it in 13 days, shooting at 100,000 wooden blocks. So you can do the math. At some point, he was shooting at 1,000 and uh, 1,000 over a minute's time. Um, but uh, uh, his it, to miss to shoot at 100, he shot at 110,000. He wanted to make sure everybody knew that he hit 100,000. Mm-hmm. He missed six. That's about a 99.994 accuracy rate. But there were some problems with it. Uh, you've mentioned this and. Uh, I guess your next question is what what popped up What's, this? What was the controversy? Yeah, what, what was the controversy? Because I guess Ed Topperwine's still around, and he's watching this and going, hey, hold the phone here. Absolutely. And uh, like I said, Remington was reluctant to promote this. They finally sent out a release showing that, that and this was right around, the, 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 the shoot ended in October. Uh, it was conducted over 13 consecutive days in October, and then finally, around December, this release gets out that Tom Fry had had uh, had uh, set this record, and so Ad Tupperwine had heard about it and wrote a congratulatory record to Tom Fry for breaking, or a congratulatory letter for Tom Fry breaking the record. But mm-hmm. then uh, a journalist by the name of Charlie Askins uh, worked for a number of different uh, firearms magazines, trade magazines, <laughs> had gotten yeah, a hold of Charlie. pictures, the still pictures. Remember, this is 1959. And the still pictures, I don't know if I should give it away, but the still pictures show something that Ad felt strongly about. Uh, Ad Tupperwine shot, when he conducted his record, he shot at a set distance. Mm -hmm. These photos, still photos, showed that uh, the distance requirement wasn't quite there. Um, Ah. But these these were wild, unsanctioned events. Many years had sure. passed by. Nobody knew that there were rules governing this sort of thing. Uh, right. The closest thing we had to a set of rules was the yellowed piece of paper that Ad Tupperwine had in the drawer of, it, of his desk at, uh, at home. Hey, Tim, let me let me ask you. Let's get to the payoff here. How do people get a hold of this book? Because it's fascinating. If you like history of guns, if you like the story, if you like kind of the controversy of the competition, uh, I think this is something people would like. What's the best way for people to grab a copy? The publisher is Texas Tech University Press, and they have a website, uh, ttupress.org, ttupress.org. Uh, you can go on there. Their, their website right now does not have the ordering platform, but you can see the customer service number there and give them a call. They'll get it to you pretty quickly. It's also on Amazon.com. At this point, it's not in the bookstores, but hopefully it will be um, – at some point, but uh, okay, well, if you're used to you ordering know. books online, there's definitely a couple of ways to do it by going through to ttupress.org. Uh, All right, or just run over to Amazon. They can grab it on Amazon. Tim, look, I got to run. Where the clock's running down on us. Tim Price is the author, and thank you so much. I appreciate this. The author of uh, Shooting for the Record, Adolf Topperwine, Tom Fry, and Sharpshooting's Forgotten Controversy. Um, People were accusations of cheating involved in this. Yeah, add top right, add t- clinky top line. When they would do their exhibition, she would actually hold an aspirin out between her finger and her thumb. He would shoot it out of her hand. Yeah, that requires uh, a lot of skill and, holy cow, a lot of trust. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. All right, there are things going on all over the country, but I'll tell you, out in California, it's it's really happening. It's 
It's pretty darn bad. Uh, Robert's going to talk to us about that right now. He's on line three, calling in from California. Hey, Robert, tell me the latest. Hi, Tom. I love your show, by the way. Uh, the Thank latest you. is right now. You can go on the on on the internet and find this. It's veto gunmageddon, and gunmageddon is a law, uh, laws actually that uh, Brown signed. And veto gunmageddon is an initiative process that we have going right now. We have 13 days left to get it uh, on the ballot, and uh, there's a, uh, if you go to the website, it shows you where you can go and find these petitions. Uh, and it's a, it's major because it's, it, it, if we can get this thing passed and just turn around Brown's veto, I think we'll send a message to the to the politicians. It also it also uh, ends uh, Gavin Newsom's plan too. Okay, so and I I can't even I can't even spell uh, gun Mageddon, so I can't even get okay. it up. So that's Are you ready? Yeah, it's it's yeah it's weird. Veto G U N. Uh, M A G, let me see, gun uh, E D D O N, and it's also they have a Facebook too. Okay, so it's so a veto gun. If you, if you gun were to go Mageddon, on Google or whatever like, Google search and type in veto gun get you get everything you need to know about uh, what's going on right now with this uh, initiative. And I get again, we have 13 days to get this thing done. And basically, okay. you're going to find the petitions in gun stores. And uh, actually, my shooting range down the road from me uh, has them also. So if so you're in California and if you own a gun, you need to get your signature in on this because the the goal is to get these on the ballot for a yes. referendum uh, because otherwise this has already been signed into law, right? Exactly. On January 1st, I'm assuming all seven, I think, exactly seven uh, laws will take effect. And, you know, there are magazine capacities. Uh, handing your firearm to somebody at their shooting range, uh, buying ammo. You have to get uh, clearance to buy ammo. Background check to buy ammo. Uh, yes, it just goes on and on. Check. And th- this is not a, gee, this is, this is what they're trying to do. This has this already is, been done. This has this passed. Is this is going into effect. This is law. So what you're, the gunmageddon, veto gunmageddon, because Gunmageddon is what it's called, like Armageddon, but it's Gunmageddon. Uh, vetoing exactly. this is basically putting it on the ballot, letting, trying to get people to vote for it. Of course, the problem there is, and I've asked the question, says, okay, you get it on the ballot. Do you have the kind of money available to fight Bloomberg? Because at this point, it becomes a marketing battle, and who can buy the most advertising? That's, exactly. Course, that's, but, you know, there are 8 million of us in California. I don't know why we don't all register to vote and uh, take care of the problem. Well, I understand. But there are you know, 8 million gun owners in California. There's only 5 million NRA members in the whole United States. So you're going to get a 5% participation uh, on political stuff. And it drives me insane. I've never figured out how to get gun owners motivated. They all shrug. Oh, yeah, man, I'm busy. I'm going to you know, just... You just want to smack them. You want to shake them. I swear, it just drives you nuts. But there you go. Yeah, but if you're in California, please, 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 13 days left to get this going. You've got to find a place, go to a gun store, sign up, uh, get your signatures on this, get your buddies, get your friends, get your neighbors, get your wife, get your adult kids, get everybody to sign this to get this uh, on the ballot. And I appreciate that. Robert, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. All righty, John, don't go anywhere. We're going to get you on to the after show. Uh, We are, heck, we're out of time for this uh, week of gun talk. So we hope that you have enjoyed it. Hope that you get out to the range, do a little shooting. Oh, don't forget, Monday night, Sportsman Channel. Check it out. Gun Venture and Guns and Gear, our two shows there. You want to see Ryan drive a Sherman tank and shoot the main gun of a Sherman tank. Very cool stuff. That's Gun Venture on uh, Sportsman Channel. In the meantime, invite somebody to go to the range, get involved, get involved politically. We must do this if you value your gun rights.